Hi, everyone. I thought I'd talk about a, well, mine has a slightly better ending, at least, but uh, there was, uh, I'll let you uh, judge by the name of the title. There's a few lessons in here. So I worked at a company, we did uh, enterprise software, and uh, we sold software to um, one of the, I won't name the bank, but one of the top five banks in the United States, and they had um, 30,000 users using our software every day. And they went through this long, this is enterprise software, so, you know, WebSphere and the, the, whole, the whole business. And they went through a long eight-month upgrade cycle where they were upgrading everything. They added an enterprise service bus. They were upgrading WebSphere. We were upgrading our software. It was all custom integrated to all their systems. And so we did all this work for a long period of time. They spent a fortune. We get together and we install it over the weekend. We turn it on. Monday morning comes along. It's all going pretty well. And then the load picks up at around 10 o'clock. And then, you know, we had four application server nodes, and the first one starts to go wonky. And then it goes out of commission. So they're like, okay, recycle it quick and turn that one off. And then all of a sudden, the second one starts to go wonky and turn that one off. And then third one, and then fourth one, and it cascades through the whole system. And now the app servers are going up and down and it's the middle of the day and all the users are calling in they can't do their work and this is again one of the top five banks in the United States where these people couldn't use pretty important piece of software so we had this thing set up where we had a war room it had like a secure connection it was in the middle of the building with no windows and like bad air and we got every all our smart people in the room and Somehow I ended up, uh, well, I guess I was in charge of the software, so I was sitting there on the phone. And th what they do is they, they set up a, a conference call where everybody gets on the call and nobody gets off until the problem's done. And so all the vendors, all their different people, the WebSphere folks, the database folks are all on the phone. We're all going through, okay, what's this log saying? And it's interesting because we'd had another um, outage similar to that like eight months earlier, and it turned out, you know, after all that work, it was nothing to do with our software. It was something to do in their environment. So they're like, okay, let's go through all the change logs of the system. So they're going through all these change logs and, you know, as, as the system's going up and down all day long, we're reviewing all this stuff. And they, there was one change that happened the night before. They upgraded a security patch on Microsoft SQL Server. And we, a very small piece of our software used that server. And um, it was a pretty important piece, but it just seemed really weird. And I remember them going, this must be it. This has got to be it. We're going to roll it back tonight. And I remember sitting there with my team and like, we still can't figure out how that could have resulted in this thing. But I, I basically let it go because they were convinced that's what it was. They were going to let everybody go home overnight, roll back the patch, start the next morning. And I was just like, I don't know. But anyways, I said, okay. So off we go. Next morning we come on. Now, the one thing I did do that was, that was smart um, was the next day I had everybody ready to record every little bit of the system as it came up online. So the next morning it comes online, everything's working fine, everything's working fine, 10 o'clock comes along, and then boom, it happens again. And I'm just like, uh oh. And off they go, and then they're again up and down, the server's not working. Um, now on this global call that all of them are on, I think the CIO of the bank showed up, not just that divisional head, the head of the CIO came on, and now they're all listening to the updates every hour. And I remember sitting there going, okay, clearly it wasn't that. And they're still looking for changes. What else changed in the environment that night? And I said, I said to my team, okay, I don't think it's anything that changed. And you know what? We could go through changes for the next 10 years and still not figure out what's going on. So I set up two teams. I had one team that said, this is clearly to do with load. Figure out any way we can reduce the load in the system. I don't care what it is. Just figure it out. Second team, go follow all the log trail and explain what's going on. Forget looking at changes, just go down to basics and figure out what's going on. So the next day comes along, we get to the end of the day, and my first team had figured out, okay, we can reduce load by switching off the system. It's pretty important, but it doesn't have to run during the day. We can run it at night only. We'll shut it off. And team two hadn't really made any progress yet, but they, they had some clues. and so. I sat there and they were doing the, the end of the day call 
And to upgrade the software was really expensive for the, for the bank because they have this huge, they only have one integrated environment that they can test this on. And it takes forever to get it ready and everybody's trying to use it at the same time. So I said to them, you know what? You guys need to prepare for a patch. We're going to give you a patch and we're going to reduce the load in the system, but I can't tell you what's wrong. And they're like, and the CIO of the bank's on there and he's like, you guys really need to step up. Oh, no, no, sorry, it was the guy running the project. So he's like, you really need to step up your stuff. Uh, why do you want us to make a change? You can't even explain what it is, all this stuff like that. And I sat there and I'm going, uh-oh. So I sat there for about 30 seconds and I took a deep breath and I said, you know what? I said, you're right, I can't tell you what's wrong, but I guarantee you this is gonna help the system tomorrow and I know we're gonna have to make a change to make this better. So you've got my recommendation, that's what I'm recommending. And then there was this quiet on the other side they stopped for about a minute and a half, and then the really senior guy came on and said, okay, we're getting ready for a patch, we'll put it in tomorrow. So, actually, I think we did that night. So that night we go in, we put the patch in, and it reduced the load just enough to keep it stable. We had like one little blip during the day, and it kept though, and we kept going, and eventually we found the problem. And the interesting thing was, you know, there's a ton of lessons in this, but we were all looking at the time of when it went unstable, what it turned out to be was a complex set of things that resulted in a memory leak, but it actually started 20, 30 minutes earlier. And if you looked at the old graphs, you could see it going up like this. And then when it ran out of memory finally from something that happened 20 minutes earlier, that's when the first server would go down and it would cascade to the next one and the next one and the next one. But and we eventually found it, we fixed it, and everybody was happy. And in fact, the client was quite happy at the end of the day because the system got fixed, they had an explanation for what went wrong, and we were, they were a long, good client at the end of the day. The lesson here was a couple of them. One, transparency is really important. If you try and lie or anything like that, you're just going to end up digging a big hole. So I was, it was a tough thing to say, but I was like, look, I think we need to make a change. I don't care how hard it is. If we want to get out of this, that's what we got to do. And the second thing was, everybody always looks for the easiest, quickest answer. They wanted to see what changed the night before. It ended up having to do nothing to do with changes. We could have spent 10 weeks looking at changes. We would never have found it. And that's kind of why I picked the title. You actually, if, if the obvious, simple thing doesn't reveal itself right away, I always believe you've got to go to basics and explain exactly what's happening all the way to the root, the root cause. And that's eventually how we found it. So. That's, that's my story. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, so complex environment, why didn't, the question is why didn't that show up in perf testing? Uh, I'll give you another, it, actually, th that same client, uh, when we got them as a client five years earlier, uh, they were our first big marquee client, we were a small startup, and uh, they didn't know that whether our software could scale. And they said, we want to do a proof of concept before we sign a contract with you. Like we basically beaten out all the big players. Um, and they said, we want to do a proof of concept and prove this is gonna work. And I'm like, well, we can run our basic software, not integrate with their systems, but, and I guarantee you it's gonna scale. Um, but it's, it's a simulation. It's not going to actually reflect the actual conditions. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure how much value that is. No, no, they're like, no, no, we got to do this, we got to do this. So they spent a million dollars, you know, setting up a lab at IBM, hiring IBM to help us get the equipment really fast, uh, us putting together this huge test. We had to generate, I think I spent literally a week with the database running full tilt generating data to simulate their system. And we ran the test great. We go into the first implementation, and it has tons of performance problems. And it's because you, uh, you, know, you cannot replicate production behavior of all the facets of these complex systems. It's, it's nearly impossible, and I've seen it over and over again. You run this big, huge test, and it gives you a false sense of security, and then you go live. Now, I'm not saying don't do performance tests, because they're still very valuable. If you look at an architecture and you say, this is a bottleneck in the architecture, how much load can this handle? That's absolutely a test you should do. There's a whole bunch of that type of testing. But to say that, to assume that it's gonna show up in perf testing, 
Now, they had a perf test environment. It didn't have the right kind of data in it, of course, that reflected these circumstances. It doesn't have all the integrations that are behaving the same way during the day that it would as it would in real life. Any other questions? Sorry, yeah, again? So yeah, this is that. That's there's another lesson in this one. They had upgraded their. Oh, sorry. Um, when we went live, was there no way to roll back? Um, and yeah, in this case, there was no there was no way back. The they had upgraded a huge ton of infrastructure as well. Deployed that. It was all at the same time. So it was big bang, and it was big banged across multiple applications, infrastructure, and everything. And uh, that's another reason that figuring out the change was really hard. Uh, and actually even identifying which change was, it was a different system at that point. And we had to just basically retune it. They had had prior to that major issues with their infrastructure as well, where they were artificially bottlenecked in their ESB, they couldn't provide us information, they were slowing down all of our calls, which just, which gives the exact same symptoms as a bug in our software, which gives the exact same symptoms as all sorts of problems. Yes? Why, so how long was it produ in production before we found the bug? It exhibited, that particular bug exhibited itself, um, well, we were unstable for two days. Um, and then we stabilized the system by reducing load. And it, by doing that, some, and you know, I can't remember the exact detail of what it was, but it was some very specific type of um, interaction, and I think it was an integration point that caused a memory leak. And then under uh, WebSphere, basically a memory leak, just uh, the memory goes up and up and up, and then uh, the JVM goes into garbage collection, and then the whole thing all goes to hell. So it, 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 the real symptom was the continuous garbage collection, and then it all deteriorates. But that scenario, I, I, you know what, I can't remember the exact detail of several years ago, but the, it was very specific. So, but the changes to the infrastructure had caused this thing, this unique thing to happen that had never happened before. That bug had been in our software for seven years, never noticed it, never triggered it. Any other questions? Yep. Do I think the War Room idea is effective? Yeah, I love that thing. Um, it is a, I'm a big believer in operations that you treat it like the army. Um, so if there's a war, they go into a war room and everybody's super focused on one thing and one thing only. Um, the other thing I like, you can learn from the Army, is drilling things. So I've done this a few times with my ops team, simulate this type of outage, make sure the recovery is fast. We know, like, test your run books for recovery. Uh, that's a big deal. There's, there's a reason that these kinds of things are done, because they work. Um, the war room is super effective. What they do is they have a they have a conference call line. They actually have someone who just takes transcripts because you got a lot of different groups from different areas giving information and they're recording it all so you can go back and look at what did this group say about this or that. And then they would also, they'd have takeaways for people and there was actually basically someone who would manage just the call. And they'd go and they'd chase down the people who had takeaways and make sure those things got done. So I thought it was super effective, and it really does focus. Nobody else is working on anything else. This is the only thing that's going on. So yeah, um, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I I unfor the question was uh, was it a circular reference in Java? No, I don't think it was that basic. There was it was there was some more complexity to it. I mean, there's lots of different ways that can happen, but I, you know, for the life of me, I can't remember the detail anymore. I wasn't a developer, so I was just managing the project. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, thanks.